technical issue of the week four, we'll be looking at life cycle costing. The learning outcome we're covering is determine the costs and benefits of a product or service using life cycle costing. Now, what is life cycle costing? It's a method of managing costs over the whole of a product or services life cycle. That's from when a feasibility study takes place until after the product has been taken off the market and after sales services and guarantees have expired. Life cycle costing is contrasted with traditional management accounting, which tend to, to focus on managing costs during the production phase when most costs are incurred. And it also focuses on a longer time horizon compared to, say, financial accounting, which concentrates on financial performance over a specific financial year. Now, product life cycle costing is closely linked to the product life cycle. So there's introduction, growth, maturity, and decline, where we start off with negative cash flows, high costs, and we only tend to see profits in taking place later on in, in, in the product life cycle. So why is life cycle costing important? Let's take time to look at this graph. That's the time from the beginning to the end of the product's life cycle. And the y-axis reflects percentage of costs committed or incurred. So it's percentage of costs over the whole life cycle committed or incurred. And um, you can see in terms of time, there's a design phase, and then we enter into the manufacturing operations phase, and finally, the end of life. And the gray line over here shows costs that have been incurred. So you can see that most costs are actually incurred during the manufacturing and operation phases. And this is where management accountants get, get involved using budgeting, activity-based costing, variance analysis, and other tools to try and control these costs. However, the red line is showing us costs that have been committed. And the key point is that by the time we've finished designing the product, a huge proportion of costs have been committed. Because once that product has been designed, normally we are committed to buying certain components, we're committed to a certain method of production, and there's actually not that much room for maneuver in terms of saving costs if we just start our work to, to control costs during the manufacturing operations phases. So it's really important for accountants to get involved in the design phase and not just leave it to the marketing and engineering uh, people. So this is where key decisions can be made and where, where accountants can uh, add a lot of value in, in terms of the profitability of, of new products. More reasons why life cycle costing is important. Nowadays, upfront and development costs are, are a lot higher than, than in the past. So for example, iPhone maker Foxon have replaced 60,000 jobs, have planned to replace 60,000 jobs with, with robots. And with high upfront, upfront costs, it's important to look at all costs and revenues over a product's life cycle. Traditionally, there would have been high labor costs during the production phase when producing iPhones. Now using robots would increase upfront production setup costs, but will reduce ongoing labor costs. So the decision by Foxon to use robots would have been made when considering the life cycle costs and revenues of the iPhone would not have been made with a view to maximizing short-term profits within a given financial year. In the property sector, upfront costs are significant. Only once all costs and benefits over the life cycle of a building are established, can a decision be made regarding the construction of, of a new property. And some products have very short life cycles, like Elsa, who can sing a song for us. Marketing and production setup costs would be pretty high. And it's critical to ensure that forecast revenues over the short product life will be enough to make the product viable. Life cycle costing is important in the software development industry. If a life cycle approach is not adopted, many successful software development projects would have been rejected due to high upfront development and marketing costs. So there are a few great benefits with regard to, to life cycle costing. There's more focus on the longer term and we get a better view of the big picture with regard to a particular product or service. We get a great understanding of product costs and profitability over time. And we are able to make better cost benefit decisions early on in the life cycle. Life cycle costing also enables better evaluation of management and facilitates rewarding long-term achievements instead of short-term profits. So, two questions. Provide examples of significant costs that would be incurred early in the life cycle of three different products. Then question two, 
Xero has achieved major success in the Australian, New Zealand and UK markets and is also growing rapidly in the United States. In spite of becoming market leaders in the cloud accounting market, it has been making huge losses. Discuss how product lifecycle costing may be of use to Xero in explaining these losses to their investors.